welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Blind. Continuing the main scenario quest, doing very important things, going around, helping out. But before that, we have a much more important thing to take care of here. Naming our Chocobo. Had a thought about this. We're going with something not too surprising here. We are Arctic, and the Chocobo will be Arctobo. It's got enough letters. Works for me. Have to name the Chocobo. Works for me. And the Chocobo likes it. Very good. Run on off. I'm going to get the whistle here. <laughs> I dare say he likes his name. Brilliant. Here is your very own chocobo whistle. Simply blow into it, and your feathered friend will come bounding to your side. But do forgive him if he doesn't respond when summoned in crowded city areas or monster infested lairs. Chocobos are stout hearted creatures, but they have their limits. And lastly, I present you with your chocobo rider's license, as is required by law. And that concludes all the formalities. Wish you and your chocobo long years of fulfilling. Companionship. Alright. Chocobo whistle. Personal chocobos. Gonna be much more versatile than the chocobo keep system with paths and stuff. You can use a chocobo whistle to acquire the action to summon your personal chocobo. Unlike rental chocobos, there's no time limit regulating how long you may remain on your chocoback. <laughs> Remember, however, there are areas such as highly populated cities and narrow dungeons that your chocobo will refuse to enter. That's fair. The action of summoning your chocobo can be set to your hotbar and is located within Mount Guide, found under Character in Main Menu. Chocobo Armor or Barding can be equipped via the Companion Interface, so you're in the Character section of the Main Menu. So they can have their own little gear and stuff. That's fine. Alright. Small hand carved whistle that makes a unique high pitched tone and serves only by a chocobo trained from birth to recognize and respond to the sound. You summon the personal chocobo. Use. Doesn't work here. We can now summon the chocobo mount. And we need to get the actual thing from the character menu here. Use character. Accommodations good enough for this. And then actions and traits and stuff. Companion orders. Should have setting CCX actions. Roles, traits, actions, commands, duty logs, social party, travel system. Companion. There's information on your plans. There it is. Gessel Greens. The official indigenous to the Near East. Sure, for most people's taste, chocobos are known to enjoy the flavor. Most of these are often used as fodder for the animals. Duration of 30 minutes. Instead of 60 minutes of offering multiple servings. Crafting material. Shop selling. Sells for. Summon, greens, follow, free stance, defensive stance, healer stance, attacker stance. Really? Print? I guess it's more companion than jump by mount. Mount guide. So we don't really have a combat companion. Mount guide is more what we want. Company Chocobo. Born bred in the city state of Ishgarn, the majority of Company chocobos are hillings of the Rossi variety. However, massive destroyers and inter Baladin genets also raised to accommodate the builds of Hergen and Lafun riders, respectively. Yeah, we would definitely need a massive chocobo. <laughs> that is totally a reasonable idea. <laughs> okay. Summon it, but can't obviously do that here in town. That's 
Also see if there's another get access to something quest here. Assuming we actually do get access to it. It's not like a PvP where we can do the quest and then we not even actually told that we know we can't actually do that. <laughs> like civilized men and women, twin adder. That's another bit with these guys. It's kinda outside. Circle Lieutenant Scarlet. Lieutenant Scarlet's looking for a few good soldiers. We get some money. Let's see what this is about. Come closer, Private Sin. I prefer that this tale be heard by you and you alone. Concerns a sensitive subject with which you are doubtless well acquainted, the Battle of Cartino. I see so that bloodbath which marked the end of the Sixth Astral Era, when both the Seventh Legion and the Allied forces were slaughtered in that winged abomination which did its utmost to destroy all we know and love. No part of Eorzea was untouched by the Elder Primal's rage, least of all the Cartenhow Flats, which were ravaged, nay, remade in the fires of destruction. The flats were rendered an accursed wasteland, and all decent small folk know to keep a wide berth. Consequently, many question why the Eorzean Alliance continues to maintain a military presence in the region, despite the personnel and material required to do so. Elegan ruins, that's why. Allied scholars have been studying them since their discovery following the battle, in which time the Cardinal Flats have been jointly administered by the three member nations of the Orzean Alliance. It was an acceptable state of affairs for a time, but no longer. Holda, Limsa, Luminsa, and Gridania have all formally asserted a claim to the territory. A diplomatic resolution is no longer possible. The matter is to be decided on the field of battle. Unless you fear that this marks the event of total war, worry not. We are allies as ever and shall conduct ourselves accordingly. All hostages will be confined to the disputed territories. Engagements shall be fought to submission, not death. <laughs> so you see, you can not hesitate to join the fray. Should you have the misfortune of facing a friend in battle, you will only be expected to subdue him, not kill him. Aye, that's right. I tell you all this because we need men and women of your caliber on the front line. The reasons are of vital importance to our nation's security, not to surrender them to a foreign power. You need not make a decision now. I ask that you speak with our man at the airship landing and listen to what he has to say. Sounds like another PvP thing, which we probably can't do. <laughs> We're gonna go see, though. We can go see. At the airship landing. Can I Ethernet to that? Potentially. It's an uh, it's a It really is very convenient. Unfortunately, there's not a connection from here. That would make taking the airships slightly more convenient. That's alright. Just gotta teleport around. It's worth it. Private Sin. Come to join the fight, have we? Very good, very good indeed. Get a tiny little cutscene showing part of the activity here. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> a battle over some mostly destroyed areas with some ruins and stuff. There's some cool ruins now. battles, not, not killing everyone. <laughs> so that's good. See how many people are involved in this. Sounds like it could even be a three-way battle, which would be extra complicated. Fighting for control of the Borderland Ruins. Oh, come. Yeah. 
looks like more PvP. Before you proceed, I must warn you, this isn't gonna be like some jaunt in the wolves' den. We'll be pitted against wave after wave of fellow Alliance members in battle, and they won't care one whit that you're the warrior of light. This campaign will be long and brutal, and victories won today may be undone tomorrow. Consider the borderland ruins. We need only seize control of each ruin in the region, right? Wrong. Defense is paramount as well, for our rivals will muster forces to challenge our claims. It's for that reason, we establish an airship route direct to the front line. Those who are ready and willing to fight will never want for transportation. Ah, with that look on your face, this seeks confusion. Are we at war or not? What is this box about no killing? What the seven hells is going on? That's what you're thinking, yes? It's less war and more organized violence to resolve a territorial dispute. And yes, it needs to be civilized violence. Killing alliance members is strictly prohibited, though accidents have been known to happen, mind you. We of all people have nothing to fear. You've escaped certain death more times than I can count. What are the odds you'll fail to do so this time, eh? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> We find us updated the new regular duty. The front line. The borderland ruins located on the outskirts of the Karnal Flats are accessible. Control of this ancient elegant site is decided via large scale player versus player battles known as frontline campaigns. Speak with a grand company flyer at one of the airship landings for further details. That's this guy, and there's the entrance. Probably can't go in. Press in, moment, moment. I'm joining the front line, perhaps you have questions. Here's information. Overview. There's the three of them. The basics. PvP. Each team has up to 24 players, allowing for a crantle of 72 in a single battle. Wild. And battle progress. Borderland. So rock. That's glory. This place. Should be in the duties section here. Yep. Also locked. Limited jobs. Series XP, PvP XP. XP. Here's the difference PvP XP does. Not that we can need to worry about that, I suppose. Yep. Locked. <laughs> and we try to go to the entrance here. It just opens up this section. In the PvP section. We got Frontline, Astral Beings, Chris on Conflict, Custom Matches, and Chris on Conflict. Casual and ranked. Alright. Due to revisions being made to the PvP system, this dude is temporarily unavailable. Her analysis will be made in patch notes or similar. And what says on the other one here? Regular. Okay. Dance a daily challenge. Interesting. Well, nothing we need to worry about. And so, we'll be off. Using up another one of our Vesper Bay Aetherite tickets here. We could technically sell these. That'd be the wrong choice. <laughs> That would be the wrong choice. They're very convenient for getting over here. We'll have to see if we run out of these. That's why we like to try to get other things done before heading back to the Scion headquarters here. Don't want to waste our free teleports. I mean, technically, since we can sell them, there is the opportunity cost, but... We're outside here. Perhaps we should. I mean, are we outside? Let's take them outside. Let's see where we can be on the joke about. This doesn't seem like a super populated city. Chocobo. Dismounting personal chocobos. While on Chocobac, Chocobo icon will appear in your status effect bar. You can dismount your chocobo at any time by right clicking this icon or re clicking the action you use to mount your steed. Use the chocobo whistle to summon your steed again. Okay. So this is the chocobo. It's right over next to this one. This is the big size. Yeah, big 
is nice. Alright. So we're going to see if we can test out how quick this is. Like, how it compares to just running and stuff. So, not quite 10 seconds to get between here. If we just regular run... in a bit. So it's definitely quicker on choke though. But since we're in the archer here, we can constantly have this ability going. Peloton. And with that, So it's still technically quicker on the choke though. But what if we have this and sprint? 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, 1,000, 10, 1,000, 11, 11 and a bit again. I wonder if these stack then. They might not stack. <laughs> Anyways, the chocobo was quicker. So that's good to know. Very cool. And then there was information about the Chocobo gear. You can find that somewhere. Character. We're really in the character section of the character. These are our attributes in gear. This weapon. Character display mode on or off. That only. Well. Venture plate. Portraits, currency, Ray. Companion, mount guide. Here's the number of mount guides. Movement is terrestrial. Not surprising. Mount dismount chug bow. That's what we have. Skills. Appearance. I guess this is this. Companion slash mount here. What are these for then? We should have 30 minutes. I'm not sure what this is in your For most people, these chuggles are known to enjoy the flavor. Those screens are often used as fire for the animals. A duration of 30 minutes. I execute this at a time. Dismiss your hand from battle. It's really not in battle. I don't, I don't know if this chuggle is going to fight. I don't think it's going to. It's got question mark, question mark. Rank zero. Desert yellow. With a grenade saddle, grenade saddle, grenade saddle. Pieces. Alright, that's fine. What are these other unlocking things quests? I don't forget to worry about that right now. We will be coming back around many a time. A little 50 quest there. We just ride into here too. It's pretty wild. We can instantly hop off. Very good. Okay. Well, let's get back to the main quest line now. Let's see what we need to do next. It's always doing something. Here's Ida and Apple Up. Let me see if I have this right. You're an adventurer who is a scion and a serpent. Kelly, how do you keep track of everything? I got a lot of menus, and I can literally look back and see everything I've ever done. So that helps quite a bit. <laughs> Must be fun pairing up with lots of different people, though. Me? I'm always with Hapalamo. <laughs> Come to think of it, why am I always with Hapalamo? <laughs> Following the Calamity, each nation's armed forces under a large-scale restructuring centered upon its grand company. Gridania, the Order of the Twin Adder, absorbed both the Wood Wailers and the God's Quiver. While the Lunasians enacted the complete merger of the Maelstrom and the Knights of the Barracuda. What is the odd nation out, having made no notable changes to its armed forces? As before, and in the spirit of the Sultanate, each entity 
retains a certain degree of independence. Very good. And silence them, Tom. Welcome back, Arctic. Lady Moonphilia awaits you within. Hey, we're getting some serpent seals. We're just gonna just keep getting these from just doing stuff. I'm okay with that. Probably at least when we are working on their kind of quests and stuff. Welcome back. Seems wasted no time putting your skills to work. You got Chocobo for the effort. <laughs> How do I know? Why, the recruitment officer called to regale me with the tale of your heroics. The pride in his voice was palpable. We signs are truly fortunate to have you with us, Artic. Now, when, we la when last we spoke, said that I wanted you to meet some friends, did I not? I neglected to mention that you have already met. Tatru, please show them in. This way, sirs. Thanks again for getting us out of that mess. We owe you our lives. But I don't think we've properly introduced ourselves. I'm Biggs. And I'm... I'm... God's man, spit it out, will you? <laughs> Why, Wedge, at your service. I'm pleased to say that Biggs and Wedge will be staying with us for a while. Magitech driven contraptions such as airships were ever more vile to the city states of Eorzea. As a neutral party, it was judged that we scions should serve as keepers of this technology. Wild. <laughs> of course, for this we needed the knowledge of the experts. And so we requested the assistance of Garland Ironworks, who very kindly sent us two of their finest engineers. Our happy family continues to grow. On behalf of the scions, I bid you welcome to the Waking Sands. Very cool. Like every soul here, I love Eorzea. I count myself blessed to have been given this chance to stand with you all and fight for the future of the realm. Never have I known such fulfillment, such happiness. We try our best. Cool, that's complete. I just need to get the next quest. Let's see what we can all buy with all these serpent seals. Probably something. What was this up to? Still 20. <laughs> we got a ways to go before we are going to potentially catch up to the level here. But that's fine for a lot of reasons. Minfilia needs to investigate the Sylphs. Okay. Now, having set aside the formalities, we have a favor to ask of you. Uriange, have the documents arrived from the students of Baldessian? Aye, my lady. They arrived but recently. We have conducted a study at the behest of the Order of the Twin Adder. Papalimo, Ida, a synopsis, if you would. Our task was to survey the behavior of the Sylphs. A beast tribe indigenous to the Twelves Wood. Oh, how to describe them. They look like gizzle greens, floating ones that worship the primal Ramu. Ahem. <clears throat> Though technically a beast tribe, sylphs are blessed with a comparatively personable demeanor, conducive to peaceful communication. Offering us an invaluable opportunity to learn what the beast tribes know of the primals. While Ramu's existence is well documented, the sylphs do not, or perhaps cannot, summon the primal any longer, insofar as can be ascertained. Until such time as we know, it would be unwise to assume that the threat posed by the primal has passed. Which leaves Gridania with the added worry of not knowing what they should be worrying about. In that regard, they are hardly alone. What we can say with absolute certainty is that Gridania has its hands full fending off Garuda. 
who, I need hardly remind you, is among the most savage and terrible of all known primals. In short, it is essential that we approach the Sylphs in as diplomatic a manner as possible. Words and actions can be misconstrued. The only sure way to communicate our intentions is the Echo. Winning the Sylphs' favor may well bring us a step closer to mitigating the threat of the Primals. Will you help us? Oh yeah. I am grateful. Lovely. Well, as much as I'd like to help, I'm afraid I would be of little use to anyone in Gridania. A veritable babe in the woods. Ida and Papalimo, however, should be able to see the forest for the trees. Is that not so, Minfilia? Indeed. You are willing? Leave it to me. Us, Ida! Us! Okay. Potentially, it's slightly less of a problem. Or, more of a problem. We'll see how the... meetings go here. <laughs> Alright. And... speak to... Miss Ella Helen in the Adder's Nest. I'm supposed to know about that. Mission is to make contact with the Sylphs. The ultimate goal of finding a peaceful resolution to the threat posed by... Ramu. Huh. Be fairly warned, the Sylphs are unique people to say the least, and may find yourself bewildered by their customs at first. You know that Ida and Haplomo will be on hand to support all your endeavors. Alright. I guess the information we get here is just from this bit. We need the power of the Echo. That's also something. We can kind of the Hoon of Beastmen report there. Alright, it's fine. I definitely don't keep a whole pile of quests on us, do we? That'll work. We can easily accomplish this. Go back to the Adder's Nest. We have the technology. <sighs> Other people also is traveling where they need to go. We need to make our own way, though. Well, that's alright. See, so we're gonna end up working with the other grand companies with all their problems, too. Seems like a possibility. It's more of the main Westline going through things. We shall see. We shall see. Can't use the chocobo inside. Can't use the abilities because they don't load, anyways. Should still be going faster. It's hard to say. I'm waiting for the guys to log in. I'm just run in place. It's definitely a system. Okay. You know far too little of the sylphs to lay any worthwhile plans. Let's call upon the scions once more if we are to. Ah, beg pardons. It's a terrible habit of finding to think aloud. But tell me, what brings you to the Adder's Nest? I am everything. I am in all the groups. Here to help. <laughs> Commander, Masil Helus has been awaiting the aid of the Scions. That's me. <laughs> well, if it isn't Private Sim <laughs> reporting for duty. Well, that's the zeal I like to see for my. Interesting young serpent. And there's these guys too. Beat him here with our return. <laughs> Morning, Commander. Sorry to disappoint you. What other business brings us here today? Ida and Pathomo. Always a pleasure to see the two of you. And tell me, you quest in the name of the Scions of late. Quite so, Commander. A little bird told us that the twin adder was in need of our adventuring prowess. I, your little bird, seems true. No doubt you've heard that we are investigating the sylphs. That curious beast tribe that calls the depths of the twelve wo Twelves Wood home. The sylphs are, for the most part, a peaceable bunch. 
Much to the delight of the elder Seedseer, who has no desire to see her people embroiled in yet another fruitless war. The twin Adder is of the same mind. It is precisely for this reason that the Sylph's relation to the primal Ramu has raised a flag of warning among Starbix. Friendly as they may appear, Beastmen will be Beastmen. Should there be even a sliver of a chance that the summoning of the primal might disturb the balance between Britannia and the Sylph tribes, it is a possibility we cannot ignore. Better be safe than sorry, indeed. Do we strike at Ramu, or leave the Sylphs to their own ways? That is the question. If I myself lacking ample knowledge to arrive at an answer. Opinions abound within Gridania, but to listen to only to one's own is amongst the greatest mistakes a commander can make. Out here from the other side, the Sylphs themselves, and seek an impartial party to serve as my liaison. That is where you scions come in. Are we really impartial, since we're also in this group? Yeah, we do our best. <laughs> the Sylphs of Little Solus remain untempered and have held many a productive dialogue with our people. I would hear their candid thoughts on their temperament tempered brethren. As said, I urge you to exercise due caution. Civic tradition and etiquette bear little resemblance to our own. It would not do to have any cross-cultural faux pas get in the way of a productive parlay. On route to Little Solace, we will come upon the Hawthorne Hut. Our officer stationed there can lend you as to how to win the Sylph's favor. May your expedition be a worthy one. A friendly with the sylphs? This should be a pleasant enough diversion. The Hawthorne Hut, was it? Oh, I believe the ferry departing from Whiteshore Pier should take us straight there. A friendly Hawthorne indeed. I hope this will be as straightforward as you say, Pavlimo. Hopefully. And they're gonna go take the boat. And we're gonna just teleport. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> Old Gridania. East Shrag. That's the lavender beds. It doesn't go directly to Hawthorne Hut. This is what's been in the middle of the center time. Oh, we need to go to the pier? Okay, fine. It's probably assuming that we haven't done so many things. They're like level 30 here. At least we're running around in town once things have spawned in using our run so it's more valuable. Internet. Organania. Let's just get those closest to the pier here. Yeah, we, we've already done everything out in the Eastern Shrine. <laughs> Eventually this will be good for showing us around to new areas that are level appropriate and all that. But hey, how you doing? I, the ferry dock to the base of this hill, ferry across the lake to the East Shrine. Once you're sure, head due east and you should find the Hawthorne Hut without much trouble. Now we can go to Hawthorne Hut. Our adventuring ways and wandering about. Definitely skipped some steps here. Or just got into the steps sooner. That's okay. Hawthorne Hut. <laughs> Could just walk there and take the boat, but still. Back to the East Shroud. Okay. And what's the inside here? Emily. How you doing? Indeed, I am Emelaine of the Twin Adder. I send you here to learn of the Sylphs, yes? For all their whimsy, they are a wary lot, truly since the Empire has come to the Shroud. Earn their trust, 
However, and they're as friendly as any folk. They have their quirks, but so do we all know. Would you know more? You'd do well to speak with the master of this hut, Rolf. He's forgotten more about the Sylphs than we'll ever know. Fair enough. Thousand gold for this Sylph showing up here. Perfect. And they are sitting right here. Rolf and Hearth, Hawthorne. Of Hawthorne Hut. Rolf Hawthorne, patriarch of the beekeeping Hawthorne family is said to be well-versed in Sylphic customs. Come to learn a thing or two about the Sylphs, have you? I'll tell you one thing. They're peculiar folk. How peculiar, you ask? Well, just let me tell you. They're... They're... Beg like, pardon, friend. My memory's just not what it used to be. I've seen much and more in my adventuring days. It's all a clutter in my noggin now. Though I've shared my stories with those around the hut before, you might have more luck with them. Right. Talk to a bunch of people. Isabel Hawthorne. The Sylphs? Yes, Father told me his stories plenty of times. But I've always found most captivating, so their concept of etiquette is almost completely alien to our own. You do best not to underestimate them on account of their childlike looks. As you face as your face end up a mess of glyphs, schools, and chivo scratches. <laughs> Side. What is that? The quickest way to a woman's heart might be through her stomach, but don't ever think of trying to force your foodstuffs on a self. They sustain themselves simply by bathing in the sun, or so Wolf once told me. And, uh, okay. Zilfs? In very tricksters and troublemakers. That's what they are. One day they're drawing horrible faces on our masks, the next they're sending our young sentries falling to the bottom of a ravine. They'll just stop and they'll just laugh at you. Of claims they harbor no ill will, but as there are such pranks, they're no laughing matter. Mm. Definitely a difference, that's for sure. Oh, of course, of course. Hear your stories, well, my stories, has brought the memories flooding back to me. I feel, I feel like dancing. Yes, nothing brings people together quite like a little toe tapping. Silv told me long ago that dancing is a time-honored greeting among their kind. You do well to remember this. Just may help you win the favor of our forest friends. Dance. Don't give them food. They will drop you off a cliff and laugh at you the entire time. <laughs> Something like that. Probably would share further knowledge to assist you in befriending the Zilfs. Take whatever I can get here. Oh, still here, eh? Great. There's one more thing you should know about the Zilfs. They don't take kindly to guests who show up empty-handed. Turn their trust. You do well to bring along a... Uh... Now, what was it again? My wife Rosa and I were just speaking of the matter not days ago. Forgive me, friend. You to Rosa at the comb. I really should prove more reliable than my own. There's a new quest here now. So continue through the main quest unlocks other quests. Fascinating. Where's this in? This? First impressions. At full flower cup. Okay. Do we take the random quest we found along the way? Just keep that available for when we have a lower level. That can actually benefit from the XP more. There's definitely options here. Jugbo. Does take a little bit of time to get on the Jugbo, that's fine. And presumably we'll need to avoid combat. Some of the other just straight along the paths Jugbo's. Perfectly fine with running past things. Let's we'll get up this way. Rosa, how's it going? Run off into the distance. Peace offering for the Sylphs. 
For anyone else, I'd recommend a jar of honey. I fear that wouldn't get you past their front doorstep, dear. No, their tastes run more to the unusual. I'm just familiar with milk root. That's what we call the root of the most fiendish sea kin. The... Oh, she... When chewed, it exudes a cloudy liquid that's said to induce curious visions in the imbiber. You did not catch me dead trying this stuff, but still seem to enjoy it to no end. I've not seen any up to around the comb in quite some time. But I did encounter a suspicious clump of grass the other day. I need to stimulate it somehow with some of this amber syrup, for example. I wouldn't be surprised what comes out. Good luck. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we can't run and cast at the same time. Still trying to get us into this fate we're not completely worried about. Here he is. Toss it. Amber syrup. Neutral rich. A combo combat. Use the quicken sea king group. French fashion. Vegetation springs to life. And we got our no group. Could teleport back over here for a hunting. Don't need to go quite that far. <laughs> it just changes the music on Joke Back. It's pretty great. You can also jump a little bit. Press its wings a bit. Lovely stuff. Right back into the hut here. Also works in buildings. That's definitely something. Ah, you're back. Is there anything to direct you to a suitable offering? Indeed. Milk root. Thick white sap extracted from this mushy root has the power to grant its user wonderfully terrible visions. Awesome. Fantastic. Milk root, but of course. The silver squat the cloudy stuff as quickly as I do a flagon of mead. It tastes just about the same as well. Any road, gift of milk root will have the silks calling you friend and brother the moment they lay eyes on it. Now let me wrap that up for you. It's starting to feel a bit woozy. Okay. Rough Hawthorne. Gift wrapped, your offering. Preparation for your journey to the Sylph's Demesis. Taking the liberty of wrapping your milk root well and good, this should keep it nice and fresh, not to mention spare you from that God's awful stench. Alright. Sylphs love the stuff, but me, I'd rather bury my nose in chocobo dung. I dare say the reek even rivals the breath of the Morbol. That put an end to my adventuring days. But I can tell you that story another time. You have more important matters to attend to today, yes? Sylphs are an eccentric bunch, but I've shared their company enough to know they're kind at heart. They'll not shun one whose intentions are true. May, you par may your parlay be a fruitful one, friend. Do it, and do stop by on your return. There's a flagon of full flower mead with your name on it, you regale me with your adventuring tales. I do love my adventuring tales. Ah, uh, and before I forget, don't go tracing off just yet. I'm in here would have a word with you. Travel in safety, friend, and do pass along my regards to the winged ones. Alright. It's good to see your knowledge of Pacific culture has matured, so you no reason to lay your mission any further. Upon your arrival at Little Solace, seek out a young sylph by the name of Komuxio. He has served as an intermediary between our peoples on many an occasion as the close ear of his tribe's elder. See, Hawthorne has furnished you with some of that malodorous root the sylphs are so adore. I have something of far greater import for you to deliver, a missive from the elder seed seer herself. To summarize the letter's contents in brief, not just for the integrity of our envoy, that would be you, 
and restates Grihania's desire to maintain a harmonious relationship with our long-standing friends of the forest. The war with the Exile has taken a toll on our resources. We can ill afford to get mired in another conflict. I need not impress upon you any further the importance of this mission. May the Twelve see you return with good tidings. Alright. And now, we go to Little Solace. Next question. How does the Chocobo handle falls? Perfectly fine. <laughs> Lovely. We run straight towards enemies. They don't care. And that's wise of them. <laughs> Might just because we're on the Chocobo. The music even changes whether we're running or not. Fantastic. These guys are looking at? Yep. The Sylphs. That's over here. Hanging out. I can't believe Clovier. Which people? Oh, let's see. Uh, walking one is not familiar to this one. This one does not trust strange walking ones. Strange dancing ones might be a different story. But this one expects no such thing. The walking one should go home and leave this one be. We must dance! <laughs> we just slay, say slash dance. Be more convenient. There we go. Play <laughs> a little dance. <laughs> Not the most spirited dance, but there was an attempt made, at least. This one would welcome walking one who moves like these ones. If a walking one would talk to this one, this one will answer. This one is a busy one, so a walking one should speak with quick tongue. We got an in. Walking one would bring a gift to this one. Walking one is most kind. We got the milk root. Thankfully, all wrapped up here. And the letter. From the seeds here. The walking one brings milk root. Milk root fills this one with great joy. This one gives thanks. Gives many, many thanks. Fantastic. The walking one carries a message for Elder One. This one will deliver the message to Elder One. Walking One should not worry. Hello there. We're envoys from Gridania. We're here to treat with your people. Ah, we come to pay our respect to your Elder. Learn from him more of your Lord Rama. Who are these ones? These Walking Ones come from Gridania. Walking One became a dancer one and brought milk root. The Walking One tricks this one. This one does not like tricks. This one will speak no more. Elder one is busy. Why one should go home? B go home, you say? The Silas of Little Silas have always welcomed Gridanian envoys with open wings. The letter carried by Artic here is an oath of peace penned by the Elder Seedseer herself. So you would refuse us. This one's reasons are no business of a walking ones. Elder one has no words for Gridania. Walking ones waste everyone's time. Well, I never. Turned away at the gates. Where do we do to deserve such a rude welcome? Was Artic's jig insufficiently jiggy? I'm baffled as you. But something tells me recent events of our erstwhile fluttery friends feeling uncommonly wary. It would seem we have no choice but to ask around, see how we might earn their trust. Alright. We got an option of potions. Weak silencing potion. A silly concoction which induces the temporary loss of voice, which is on most targets up to level 20. It only works on enemies up to level 20. Induces deep slumber. Induces temporary loss of motor skills. Paralyzing. I'm sure we're going to paralyze three things. It's going to be great. Okay. Well, this is going well. 
we'll see if we can actually make some progress here. It was all going so well until they showed up. Usually they're helpful. <laughs> no. Presumably, it's more of a problem the silts are having. But we will find out. And also probably just fix their problems. Typically how things go, eh? <laughs> Next time. Goodbye.